Yeah, dude, so I found your channel basically, yeah, I discovered your stuff after the Ludwig video, the Mogul Mail video, because I was actually watching a lot of the Mogul Mail stuff when he was, when, around the time where he posted the video about you, because I thought he was doing decent work. Um, it was like daily uploads, like critical style stuff without like it being like unwatchable, even though it's like low editing, whatever. And then he does that. And I was like, well, I was watching the video because you were in the video that he made. I'll just um, share my screen so people can see what I'm referring to. So obviously you guys know. I will say why, why you're doing that. Um, I mean, most of Ludwig's videos are fine it's just like when you do low research political takes on a subject that you're not that aware of like it, it's going to be very very easy to uh disprove you like, like how john gonna... tron went went and talked to destiny that was very stupid of him yeah exactly because he was just like pulling statistics out of his ass, and then after that everyone was calling him racist like, people were saying like he was just reading headlines and he didn't actually know why uh to say the things he was saying but otherwise yeah. he could have made a point that was probably half decent i actually made the same mistake ironically when i made a video on noah samson um i literally did like a like just a one take reaction to a Noah Samson video. I said some things that could have been said better, etc. But it was just kind of like slop content, and he was able to use that against me in a, in a video that he made responding to me. It was kind of like a hit piece. Yeah. And he, he went over a bunch. Oh, of yeah, absolutely stuff. never do that when someone does scripted videos. That was kind of Ludwig's big mistake because he's like, I want to put in four hours into this video on a against a guy who's going to put in like seventy, no seventy, probably a lot more than that, probably one hundred and sixty hours into that video that I put in, maybe more yeah. than that. Yeah. So there you go. YouTube tip: If you're ever going to be a drama channel or, or whatever, never do a fucking short unscripted video on someone who does research you will get f every time so so anyone just watching right now so this video is a year ago by mogul mail it got 2.3 million views and it's about think before you sleep and he basically calls him like a sexist and stuff and makes well you know we'll talk about your response and stuff it makes you know just pretty poor arguments would you say this video like negatively affected your channel like at the beginning no i mean like i got a lot of like negative comments from his followers but like i didn't lose any subscribers from it from it yeah like it's very very like you have to really f up to to lose subscribers like i mean like horrendously f up like f up like nick is not green f up yeah typically like anytime someone makes a video on you, you're not gonna lose subs like you you have to piss off your own following to lose subs and and the a lot of the stuff is so maybe unfortunately polarized that anybody who, who makes a video on you who's if, if like ludwig makes a video on me and says he doesn't like my channel and someone from my channel watches it they're probably not really gonna agree with ludwig or they're gonna be like okay that was one bad video but like the rest of the videos are good gotcha one thing i realized is um after noah samson made his hit piece on me or whatever is that like in my response, I was super apologetic. I didn't double down on really anything. I mean, there's like one thing I doubled down on. Actually, no, there's a few things I doubled down on, but but I started the video being super like apologetic and super like like I was hearing him out and stuff like that. And I was only doing that for self-preservation. Like honestly, like ultimately, I mean, I mean, he made like a few good points like throughout the video. I mean, obviously, because he did a bunch of research and, and the video that I made that he responded to was, was just shit, if we're being honest. So I, I made it pretty easy for him. I gave him like all the material he needed to, to dunk on me. Um, but in my response to his video, I'm kind of just tail between my legs for like the first chunk of it. And I did this partially because like, yeah, he made like some good points. This video would not have done well if it was all shit. But also because I was like worried that my fans were going to like turn on me and unsub. But like afterward, looking back, I'm like, I could have probably just doubled down and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have lost any more subs than, you know, you um, probably would have gained subs if you doubled down that human psychology probably would have gained subs if you doubled down, but that's yeah. not necessarily the most moral thing to do. Typically, like what a, what a lot of YouTubers make the mistake on, especially YouTube who make content quickly, like Ethan does this constantly, is that they will be overly aggressive in how they address the creator that they're talking to. So they'll be like, this fucking moron doesn't know what they're talking about. And the second you start talking like that, you look like an asshole and everybody will stop listening to you. And also you make it a, a way, way easier for someone responding to you, like for someone like Noah Santos, Samson to respond to you and say, this guy's like obviously a bigot because he called me a fucking moron in the video. Yeah, if, you, if you're a little bit more reserved and softer with that type of language, it's way, way more difficult for uh, someone to make a hit piece on you yeah I'm, i mean that's something you know i have to work on because like i like to provide like energy and stuff like i like yelling i like getting people yeah. riled up like i think I it's mean, fun no, you can provide energy but you have to be very very careful about how you um like you want to insult people with facts not with words because they yeah that, that will convince more people oh yeah who are, um, yeah no so yeah no the point of like not just being like oh you're dumb like you're fucking stupid but yeah like if i'm yelling yeah, like, like a point like i feel like i don't know i don't know if the yelling thing takes away from the point i hope it doesn't I, I, do, do you think it no, does i don't think it does I, but i think like there's a reason why leafy got banned off of YouTube and it's because he, that was his demeanor. Now, was YouTube right for doing that? No. I, I, I think free speech is a uh, priority, but yeah. I mean, this is like, we're not really in a free speech zone. So you have to be careful. Yeah. Sorry. I don't, I know you probably thought about this like for way more of your life than you, you probably would have liked to, but I just, I want to like, you know, familiarize my chat with like the lore on the Ludwig stuff and then the Noah Samson stuff, just so like they can kind of get, get a clearer picture of like what, what exactly happened here. So Ludwig made a video on you responding That's to a video. That's actually not where it started. Or yeah. Okay. It sorry, started much earlier than that. So, 
uh, Ludwig and, ha and Hassan are friends. Hassan uh, did a stream on my channel probably two months before on that specific video. I think it was called How Feminist Ideas Make People Weak. And it was about like basically affirmative action in video games where they're going to give uh, women gamers can't uh, compete at the level of male gamers. So they're going to give them free spots that they didn't earn uh, through merit. And I was like, that's kind of sexist. And so Hassan made a video uh, reacting to that in another video of mine where he basically uh, said some racial slurs and but they don't count because they're white racial slurs right and basically said this video is so crap and i'm guessing what happened is that he's like they they hung out one day and hassan was like hey look at this channel it would make a good video for your mogul mail and uh, oh no that's actually not what happened uh hassan's friends with uh, it's timmy who is a uh, plays apex legends and they talked and then it's timmy made a tweet uh talking about my videos like i don't like it uh and then ludwig made the video on me but he saw it gotcha yeah the it's timmy guy he just for people in chat who don't know him. I didn't really know him either, but apparently he's pretty big in like the uh, Twitch gaming scene. He won actually the the streamy for like uh, first person shooter gamer of the year uh, in the streamies a few nights he's ago. He's ridiculously but that's good at joke. Apex Legends. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not taking away his skill, but I think the streamies are totally like a circle jerk. It's just like you invite your friends and just give them awards. Yeah, who gives a shit about those? Like it's only one side of the political aisle that's get, that gets invited to that type of event. So it's like it's not really and nobody likes award shows anyway. Nobody wants to see like content creators go, look, I'm so fucking awesome. Like nobody cares. They only yeah. cared when it was like the Academy Awards when they would cancel every other TV show for that that segment. Right. And e even in that case, like before YouTube came out, uh, the Oscars and, and all these award shows were losing viewership as competition got higher in, in the cable market. Like they, they've been losing viewership since like the year 2000. Yeah. It, it's not just a recent thing. Like, and now it's just like nobody views it. Yeah. But I, I guess I was just, but, I was just bringing up the, the award to, because like, well, I mean, obviously it's, but like it's Timmy, like this guy is not like a nobody, right? So like all these people that kind of like, who are in like that Twitch streaming space, I feel like they're all kind of like buddy buddies right yeah because they all go to the same events but yeah. in in this in this case what they i think what they were trying to do they they i guess they thought i was much younger than i actually am because they were like oh dude this guy's like a 17 year old who really looks up to timmy and like wants to be his best friend or some bullshit so they're like dude they're like dude bro timmy would fucking hate you and i'm guessing uh timmy is a lot more political uh when he's offline kind of smart to not say his politics online uh because he's not in political community like a uh, right a nice jay leno quotes like if you're if you're like a gamer or like uh, some Hollywood person, you say your politics, you're going to lose half your audience. And that's why Get Bro uh, get Woke Go Broke works uh, or it doesn't work in their case. So um, they, they tried to be like, oh, this guy um, worships this Apex Legends streamer because he also plays Apex. And I was like, actually, I don't really care. Like, I, I know that people on Twitch are leftists. I just want to learn how to play the game. He's, he's good at the game. Yeah. So, so they thought it was some major own. So they all kind of like attacked me at once for content. And I was like, I'm going to turn this shit into content. Thank you. Yeah. I think you also sort of give them like an, an image of like, like just like your branding and stuff like it gives the like Hassan types kind of like the general ammunition they need like oh he doesn't show his face or like oh he has like a nasally voice oh he's and, yeah. and then and then he's saying things I also disagree with so it's like they can kind of you know what I mean it's like you 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 he can just sort of like weaponize those things they, they profile the channel and I was like great because I'm not like any of those channels that you're talking about and I can make you look really bad for doing that yeah so it's, yeah. They, they think it's like this is a no research channel this guy like has never looked at a woman before or something like you, you <laughs> anytime they say shit like that that makes me look weak it actually makes you more powerful I, I don't get how they don't understand that narrative because it's the entire leftist narrative is that i'm oppressed therefore give me stuff they, they use that 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 rule of power all the time and yeah. they just give it away by by making uh insults and accusations at their opponents because now yeah. i can claim i'm oppressed yeah well i think i was gonna say similarly with like the whole bottom line of lgbt being to include when they don't do that it's like very morbidly ironic like they exclude anyone who doesn't fall into those letters so it's it's very interesting it's like yeah. love is love and love all and whatever but it's like well actually there's some contingencies here so it's like okay well then it kind of defeats the whole fucking point you know it, 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 it makes it really hard to run the the i'm not privileged line when when hassan grew up rich and he got ferried into youtube success through his uncle so oh, yeah tyt like, i make a, i might make like a whole a, like video on his past because there's so much there like his dude yeah he he, he, was, he was destined to be a millionaire like from birth yeah like he's the exact person that he he claims he's not like it's he's not the first one like carlos maza i don't know if, if you remember that there was a big uh, drama between him, him and Stephen Crowder and during that drama it ended up getting, getting revealed that a massive massive communist was actually just a trust fund kid who had millions of dollars in the bank account. That was the, the Crowder
Twitter thing. That was the f- Newton thing, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, well, it was YouTube safe. It was uh, no, it was, it, it was uh, socialism is for figs. Is what the was what the shirt said. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Oops. And word word that everybody used to say constantly, like five years ago. Now you can't say it. I don't really get that. Yeah, I don't really give a. F- and I mean, like constantly. You can watch old TV shows and hear that word every every other word, yeah. and nobody cares. So yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that it became this big thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, so he uh, had that little drama with Stephen Crowder. And by the way, this this drama f***ed over every creator on YouTube because it caused the apocalypse. Yeah, that was the apocalypse. Yep. That was, that was, this was the, the second, second one. one. The first one was the was, uh, PewDiePie one, right? And this is the second one. I don't, I don't know if I was around for the first one. And I didn't pay t- attention to YouTube that much until I became a YouTuber. Yeah, that, that caused the apocalypse f***ed over lots of YouTubers. And it turned out that this guy was a multi-millionaire trust fund kid who never had to work in his life. And yeah. Hassan, not much different. It's not like Hassan does anything that's hard. He just like <laughs> he just like sits and watches and watches videos. And a lot of times he's not even there. Because it's so funny. He makes fun of people who claim he should react harder. But it's like, I literally do that. Like, I give the fucking energy. Like, I give the audience something. And he just sits there. He's like, bro, what? Bro, what? Bro, he's a Trump supporter. Yeah, but he he, he does it in a particular way that fits an archetype. And the reason he, he can do that is probably because he's been media trained. Yes. Probably because yes. His, yeah. his, 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 he's got an uncle who's in media who has connections. And he's got a rich father who can pay for all this shit. So yeah. Yeah, he's got a huge advantage That's upon true, people yeah. who had to learn all this shit themselves. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, no, he's literally been like totally he's PR trained, camera trained. Yeah, I, I've heard him talk about vocal training to get a, like a one up on me. He's like, yeah, you know about that stuff because you've been given to it since you were a kid or at least yeah. since you started uh, media. Because like you can listen to him before he he built his like dude bro persona. I know uh, you're talking on about. Twit. He, he, he sounds like lame. Dude, also yeah. very effeminate. Too. Chat, check this out. I'm going to pull up the um, it's like the bro text like he, thing, he, right? He doesn't sound like he has a media voice. When was this like 10 years old? This is a 10 year old like or something video of Hassan. Yeah, it might be older where, than that. Where he, he's, yeah, it might be even older. Where you can see before he grifted to this, like, um, liberal echo chamber, far left extremist, he was, like, totally like a Nelk Boys frat bro type of type of guy. Like, uh, you'll see in this video, I've seen this so many times because I think it's so funny. This this is, like, this to me solidifies the grift, man. And you, and, and I, I can't stand the cope of people who are like, well, they just change over time naturally. It's like, when the difference from 25 to 35 is not the difference from 5 to 15. By 25, you should not do a complete 180 on your moral morals and beliefs. Not saying that he did, but just in general, you shouldn't do that from the, from the time you're 25 to 35, like iDubbbz did. I don't know if you know iDubbbz. I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure you do, right? I know iDubbbz. Yeah, I did a video on him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did, uh, on his, on his Tana Mojo thing. Yeah. Well, he's completely done like a 180 or like a 360 on his morals. Well, a 360 would mean he's, he's the same, but 180, 180 meaning like he's now completely left wing, completely progressive. Whereas like, you know, 2016, he was a free speech absolutist, you know, edgy humor, pushing boundaries. He was like, what, 28? when he had these takes and now he's like 33 five years later and he completely because in the past several years uh after after trump won the election they did some sort of big uh free speech uh cancellation and they started just silencing everybody and this is when the, the left uh, went from the free speech party to the party of censorship because previously the right was the party of censorship through like things that were not of the church would get censored yeah purity but... culture yeah. and so what happened was uh, i'm sure i dubs and like filthy frank and these people they were all on the left and they were like well we were just doing the free speech thing and this is why our contents like this and holy f- now they're saying free speech isn't allowed we're gonna lose our jobs so filthy frank turned that into a music career and then i dubs turned that into i don't know the worst thing yeah just, I just quit. <laughs> yeah like a, the worst i've ever seen but my, my point when bringing this up is that like obviously people do change naturally but like most people who grift online do not come to their defense and say that they've grown up okay because most of the time whatever's profitable online for media and social media they'll just do what's profitable it's rarely ever about changing your morals if it's not profitable to change your morals a lot of the times people won't do it okay on this week's social guru we cover an old classic war horse the let's get out of here rule this one's been passed on for centuries and helped even the vikings get laid I actually lost my virginity with this rule, by the way. I'm not gonna lie. Dude, Where you hear the... how different his voice is in this? Where's he in this vineyard? Looks very like a, a very bougie setup. Yeah, yeah, this. yeah. It's like a lake house. It's like it's like five thousand dollars of wine behind him. Yeah. Rule because you're smart now because you follow bro tip and you start talking to this girl. It finally leads to hooking up and you're bold enough to grab an <laughs> cheek and then maybe even get some hand play downstairs. What is the next move? 
You need to get out of there, and you need Dude, to- Dude, do you hear this shit? This is like some Andrew Tate level shit. This is like the war room. Oh yeah, he was doing this shit when, when pickup artistry was popular. That's when it like blew up like 10 years ago. Dude, the grift is And so is this crazy. was like the, the, the raving meta, people getting like millions of subscribers, like with the prank <laughs> channels and stuff like that, doing a uh, pickup and stuff like that. So he was probably just going off of that, and then it didn't work, um, because he's just sitting in a room doing stupid like BuzzFeed shit that nobody cares about, nobody actually is entertained by. The bad parts of, of traditional media is that they have a lot of formats people don't actually care about, but they get viewership because there's no other options and when you have other options people don't watch shit like this yeah do you hear what he said though he's like you gotta grab an ass cheek that's like the trump grabber by the pussy thing he's like doing the same shit. yeah basically people can change but typically you don't change that much though it, did, it was 10 years ago but he, yeah well no but he's a grown fucking adult though, in this. uh no i think he's younger than me so i think he might be like 21 and this yeah he, this is a long time ago what the fuck? no way damn all right dude if i don't look like this, this by next like, year bro maybe i shouldn't be shaving anymore maybe i gotta grow out a beard to get out of there fast you know what that that in one oh. year you probably need to take steroids do you think he's That's on the like, juice i don't know i mean probably not i mean unless well i don't know probably not like you you could test on screen as i just said that um you could definitely get that big without steroids but like if you want to get gains that fast like to get that big i think he's at like a 400 pound deadlift or 450 deadlift here Damn. like you're probably gonna need to, to juice hopefully with the girl so you have to use these five magic words let's get out Why of here Pepsi? you might think wait a minute there's no way this is gonna work Yes, it does. Let's get out of here. It's time to get out of there, and it's time to separate her from her herd, meaning her crowd of girlfriends that are going to do their best to block The demeanor is all the, is all the cringe uh, delivery uh, that he makes fun of. Yeah, literally. And lonely. If let's get out of here doesn't work, you exchange numbers, she leaves, you leave, you guys talk I can't hear later, what's going on, but I, I detect misogyny with that picture. Yeah. Continue on for the rest of the night. Oh, if yeah, the that's, let's get that's out very of here typical does work, you, you have successfully left- This guy's a radical feminist, by the way, guys. I, I you guess remind everybody in chat club with a hot girl hopefully in the cab and you're going to your place or her place now once you're in a more intimate one-on-one -on -one situation it's much easier to get things moving forward if you hadn't played the finger fun already in the club now is the time to utilize those magic fingers. Dude, I can't believe this, bro. Didn't, didn't he say something like, he said something transphobic in this video, didn't he? At the end, he was like, you don't want, make sure she doesn't have a dick, bro. Oh, by the way, on that note, you could hear many of the big leftist celebrities saying shit that would be considered transphobic if you just go back in the past long enough. Oh, yeah, like, I think one of the sure. big ones is that people that, like Jimmy Kimmel was a much different person 20 years ago, like a much different person. He has a lot less of an excuse because he was like 40 then. Like he is saying like transphobic shit all over, uh, what, what was considered transphobic shit all over his shows and stuff like that. Like, I remember, I had a, because I used to listen to a show called Love Line a bunch of years ago, and he was on one of the episodes from like 2002 or something like that, and they spent like a good 10 minutes making fun of a trans person. Yeah, well, he also did blackface too. Do you remember that? Yeah, but I guess you can get away with that. Well, I guess you can get away with the transphobic stuff too. Like, uh, on a, well, as long as you said it a bunch of years ago and you, you uh, promote the vaccines or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Sorry, Take I think I just got you canceled. No, I don't think that's cancelable. No, Show off that impressive vinyl collection that no one else gives a shit about and go into town. <sighs> Once you bring them back home, it doesn't matter how impressive your Spotify playlist is or however many stamps you've collected in 21 years of virginity, the only thing that'll matter is your teacup pig. If you don't have that, it doesn't really matter what you have. You should move on to the sex as soon as possible. Pour a glass of yellowtail because you have nothing better. Put some Marvin Gaye on and get your freak on for the first time in your life ever. You're welcome. And that concludes our bro tip of the week. Why does he sound like that? And that concludes our bro tip of the week. Leave your comments and ideas and yeah, he's opinions probably doing that I really truly care more like a bro, but like this is what like the cringe internet shows would do back then. Yeah. How old below, I, I'm, and if you I don't, think it's I'm like ten years old. Like it's not very. It's not dog. recent. Certainly, he's a lot thinner uh, now than he is in this this uh, this video. Yeah. So. Anyway, so that was a little little sidetracked, but obviously Ludwig and Hassan and then the It's Timmy guy. So they're all kind of friends, and then Ludwig ends up making this video, and this video was on how feminist ideas make everyone weak, right? Right. Okay. And then so what what, what would you say like is because 
obviously you made like a big response to this and it was like how people are being radicalized and it got more support than his video did by volume technically it did because remember he's got three million subscribers on his main channel right. uh and then i guess 1.5 yeah. on and like wow my video didn't do that much worse than his that's embarrassing him for him yeah. uh I, I forgot what the question was uh, what like what's radicalizing people is it what the question was no like what was like the core arguments that he made in the uh this youtuber sucks videos like do you even remember he one of the big arguments he made was like this guy's bad at research because i i made a, a little research from because sometimes it's like man i'm doing a lot of fucking work like if you if you want to look up something it, a lot of times it will take hours of reading to find the study that you want and like sometimes just go with the first study that that, that is that goes over the information that you're talking about and in this case i was like there was this big study about online harassment between men and women and the amount of harassment that men and women receive is roughly the same and i was like this sounds like more of like a human nature thing and not a cultural thing it's the study's a little old and i showed it on screen to say hey this is old just to, not like i was trying to hide it but it's like what are the odds that the numbers are in, aren't any different like it, there's like a four percent difference probably pretty much the same amount of harassment in terms of online harassment so i used that study and he's like bro this study is so fucking old like why would he use a study from 10 years ago like apparently uh pew did this study a couple years ago and it's more updated i was like well yeah i'm also not a millionaire who's got a team to uh, people to look this up for me so like i'm just doing this by myself um and he he that was like a big get of his and he, he made fun of me for that and then i look at the numbers and i was like well if one you're not talking about what i was talking about in the video which was a particular type of i think it was talking about gendered harassment i forget what type of harassment i was talking about uh he, he changed the subject to what he wanted to talk about not what i was actually responding to and then he didn't go over the numbers that i actually talked about in my video and if you look at the new study the numbers were almost exactly the same so this is the new study by the way so this is among the 41 percent of u.s adults who have personally experienced online harassment percentage who say their online harassment was a result of their blank well this is self-reported too that was actually well yeah i guess so um it, i would hope that pew asked the questions in a, in a roughly scientific way right yeah okay for sure i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna say pew is, is not credible but i just you know what i mean like i feel like uh not not to say that this is wrong but i feel like when you're a minority you might be tr kind of trained to believe that anything negative you experience is because of that too like you're more likely that's to true. attribute the harassment to that that intrinsic thing so i think that that's also part of it but let's see the numbers here what do you think about this though men say it's it's 18 percent of why they receive their harassment and women say it's 47 percent oh i mean I, I responded to that particular point in the video um that's probably true but if overall harassment is roughly the same who gives a shit what category it falls under who ca who cares if you're made fun of because you're a woman or because you're a certain race or because your political beliefs right. in fact i made the point in the video where it's like political harassment is, is probably way worse than uh sexism because people people burn buildings and shit over political harassment. Like they get really, really violent over you not believing what they believe. It's like, just because someone says, it makes a get in the kitchen joke, doesn't mean like you're actually in danger. So this was like how people are being radicalized. Yeah. I w so do you remember like when you addressed the study? I just like want to watch the video and hear what you said. Oh, jeez. Um, or I could probably, probably just find Probably at 11 minutes. Oh, the the oh, part perfect, where I'm, I'm talking about the numbers is at 11.15. Uh, I don't All know right. if I show both the studies. Yeah, let me just Ludwig might've showed that. Consistence. Now there's not a huge difference between the total harassment that men receive oh, versus it women. On screen. So, so it says overall men are somewhat more likely. Is this the same Pew thing? Is this the one that you're looking at? Yeah. So uh, on the right is the 2014 study that I used for my video. And on the left is the study that Ludwig used that he uh, clearly did not read, by the way. Uh, he oh. probably just, because what a lot of these oh, people do Oh, he just got this like, screenshot like, here. Yeah. Uh, I, I did the screenshot, not him. So um, what a lot of these people do is that they don't know how to read data or they're too lazy to read, or it's probably more a, little, a combination of both. And more specifically, they don't know how to read mm -hmm. uh, scientific data. So what they will do is they will look look for a chart or a number that confirms their bias and they'll immediately stop there. And they won't see the context of the chart. They won't do any sort of critical thinking about like, how did they get these numbers? Uh, maybe they did this, maybe the questions were asked this way, or maybe they surveyed this group of people. And what would that, what effect would that have on the study? They just say, oh, number, something I agree with, therefore I'm putting this in the video. That's where, that's how Noah got screwed over too. Cause like, just because you think that this study says 70% of women say whatever, doesn't mean that this was an accurate study. And because it's, it's a corporate study, it's most likely not accurate. Those are the most biased studies you can see. Right. Um, so in, in, in this case, the thing I was talking about, God, these numbers are yeah basically the same, yeah. is I use the 2014 numbers of overall harassment of 44% versus 37 and look in the, uh, and men technically get harassed more. Yeah, there's, there's a 2% uh, difference between what not, he referenced and yours. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. in, in both categories, the 43% is male and the 38% is female. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, so wait, overall, yeah, men are somewhat more likely to ex experience harassment. Yeah. So it's not, not that big of a deal, but it is more, which is funny because they'll, they'll make a big deal. Like, again, 
Ethan will make a big deal about 0.2% of a difference on a, on a category uh, just because it, it looks better on him when if you zoom out and you if you surveyed more people that 0.2% category would either um, would probably just go away right because like yeah. that just means like one one less person on this side of a study of a thousand people <laughs> didn't do the thing he said they did or, right. or they they were studying that particular category so, so I, I would say these are a fairly negligible difference so yeah but your, your point basically is that because there's men are men are five percent more likely to experience harassment online than women that the net harassment kind of like trumps the fact that these that the type of harassment or like the reason that women get harassed the, but the like okay so like if men are getting harassed more likely it doesn't matter that when women are harassed it's because they're women is that kind of like your that's point? kind of their argument where it's like it matters more because women was basically their argument it's like yeah. yeah but you know how like if you uh talk about their skill at the game that's a lot uh less mentally hurtful than you saying they're bad because they're a woman or something like that it's like well first of all like what what gamer lobbies have you been and women will make yeah. Uh, targeted like insults that are not about the gameplay all the fucking time. Yeah. Uh, like they'll save a small dick, you're short, you sound like an incel, when yeah. are you gonna leave your mother's basement? Like nothing to do with your gameplay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I don't give a shit about any of those comments. I think a lot of those are funny when you're playing video games. And uh, especially uh, Ludwig's argument, uh, which I really thought was hilarious, is that bro, if you wanna say that you're bad at the game or, or make fun of people for being bad at the game, that is totally fine. And my whole point was, is that this type of censorship saying that you can't say this thing over here is gonna lead to in in heavily increased censorship to where you'll basically be able to say nothing. And so Ludwig saying that it's fine to insult someone for, for playing the game badly is actually censored by, by Apex Legends. So I, oh, right. I made a comment in one of my games. I actually, I got a three day ban for this on Apex. I said, crypto, you suck because the guy sucked. And he reported me and I got banned for it. I didn't I didn't wow. say he was, uh, I didn't make a gendered insult. I didn't talk about some sort of unchangeable factor like whatever his height was or his dick size. I just said, you're bad at this game. And I got reported. Right. <clears throat> so yeah. th they that's actually that's actually not even how this is playing out. They're, they're trying to make it so you can make no insult. Yeah. Well, I'm mean, fun. Right. Well, yeah, literally. And I also, I, I think that this sort of like disproves their narrative to begin with, right? Because men being more likely to experience any form of harassment online, like by 5%, kind of like, it, it kind of defeats the purpose. Because like you're saying, well, yeah, they get harassed less, but the reason they get harassed is because they're women. So therefore it doesn't matter that they get harassed less because that specific type of harassment, like we just arbitrarily decided that that's, that it's worse because it's sexist. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of like what the study, what the Noah Sampson study did. It's like, we decided that men answer this incorrectly. So we're going to say that actually women are underrepresented and men are wrong when they say they aren't underrepresented in video games. Yeah, interesting. So he just brings... I'm just, like, just going to see what... I want to hear what he said here. You can look right here that men are more likely to be harassed based on their political views and women are more likely to be harassed based on their gender. That's the problem. That's that's what we're talking about. That's what the BBC is trying to know. Not just, oh, raise your hand if someone said something mean to you once. And then he goes on this weird tirade. I'll let that's such a bad argument, though. No, I mean, obviously we did just... Like address why it's bad but like he's just saying women are more likely to get harassed because of their gender but men are more likely to get harassed in general so what the f yeah so yeah you're, you're basically it's like a like a he said she said sort, sort of situation where it's like oh my harassment is worse because yeah. you bad it's not really an argument yeah when obje objectively at least by that self-reported research that men are getting harassed more yeah um again i don't think any of this as long as someone's not doxing you or doing actual threats i don't really give a shit if yeah in general says they don't yeah. like you or they, they call you a mean word i think that's that's dumb and if you really are offended by that then just turn the internet off yeah you can actually that's, that's, that's probably better for you yeah that's sort of like the bigger the bigger thing with this whole thing is it's like this this whole argument is presupposing like that it, it's you it's unbearable to get called a mean name online i mean it it's i guess a little bad but like it, well, yeah, it's it not was good, sort of but... like like i had to i mean to make this video i had to to look at a bunch of people saying i was a terrible person i mean that wasn't the greatest thing for my mental health but like i'm fine right well i, I guess it i'm just that a deal. Yeah, I guess I'm just more talking about like gaming and stuff, like like voice lounges. But like I, I, even in like one case where someone says you're bad at a video game, like who cares? Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. It's not, yeah. it's not like if it really offends you that much, you shouldn't be playing these games or you get therapy. Like you, you've got problems that need to be resolved, or you just can't you can't go unmuted on the internet. I mean, yeah. certainly there are, there are people who are in that position. That, fine, don't like why does my gaming experience have to be ruined because you're you're offended? Yeah, I get because his argument is basically saying that like like let's say you're a guy playing a video game, it's like you're told you're dog KYS KYS dog 5% more likely than a woman is but like when a woman gets harassed
fast. It's like, go to the kitchen. And he's saying the kitchen is worse, which is like, well, no, but like, the I don't know. It, it, yeah, you're right. It's just totally arbitrary. Well, they, they make rape threats, which is like, how's okay, that, well. how's that I'm going to do that for the internet? Yeah. They will do that, but it's like, it's through a computer. So even if they're they're as serious as possible, they're probably not going to actually be able to hurt you. And again, if that if, if that harms your feelings or hurts your psychology, you probably shouldn't be playing these games. Yeah. And, and this is this is how this is how sports has worked and, and competitive spaces have worked throughout the history, throughout the centuries. People, yeah. people like I mean, they think that that's bad. Why don't some of these people play like an actual sport and see how rude people are in sports? Yeah. They they get furious, and it's not through a computer screen. Hundred percent. I just want to hear him what he has to say here. Let it play. This is one of the fundamental differences between men and women that feminists don't get because they think that men's words mean the same thing that women's words do. Men and women have different experiences, so in a lot of situations, their words and expressions mean different things. In these kinds of situations, I think that women tend to be more indirect and polite. So they'll say something nice, but really intend something mean, while men will say the worst possible things to each other and not mean it at all. It's yeah, hard. that's also factual as well. I think, I don't know if you just heard, but he was just playing a clip of you. Yeah, so he's saying that um, the words people use mean different things. Yeah, that's called neurolinguistic programming. I mean, if you, I'm surprised he doesn't know that as an influencer. Oh, it's it's kind of like when, when you when you get high, to high levels of influence, you have to know how people perceive the words you're saying. So I know that if I use the word woke, a person on the left is going to see that differently than a person on the right. And when you're, especially again, when you're communicating with large audiences. So I don't know if he just doesn't consciously realize that or if he's trying to be like facetious here. But like, yeah, when a guy says something, it means something different than a girl saying it because we have fundamentally different experiences. Yeah, interesting. So like, it's not that deep. Yeah, there, was, there was also a couple situations where he was like, again, you have to not look into any of the context of this stuff to think it's it's this way. Like there's a big argument where like men will just uh, shit on women unprovoked. And they give the examples and the specific examples that they give were all cases where the women were actually instigating the arguments or at least instigating the arguments a, a certain percentage of the time. There's one with, um, I can't remember, I think her name was Chastity. She, she plays Overwatch. And she was like, like the, the line was, oh, fuck all women, fuck you and something like that. And they were, they were being really mean to her, except they didn't show the entire clip. There's a clip of like 10 seconds before this interaction happens of her being a her being extremely rude is like um is anybody gonna help me over here at this thing i feel like i'm doing all the work and so they responded in kind and she started it yeah so they're not really giving a lot of this context and uh the person that he uses for his video spontaneous um is super rude to people when she plays video games and not only that but she uses gendered insults and and uh instigate shit all the time but then she makes this video like how women are treated in video games i'm so oppressed well stop being a facts or deal with it okay Stop. That was It's Timmy again, a professional Apex Legends streamer and competitor, right? as in someone who is actually good at the game, mm -hmm. and that's how he handles toxic players. He doesn't scream back at them and yell at them like that girl did. What happened was, is they were playing a ranked game, and the Bloodhound guy who was mad got killed first. Mm -hmm. The other team realized they were fighting a famous streamer, and gave him three free kills. Timmy's teammate who died is pissed because Timmy just got a bunch of points for those kills, whereas the guy who died got nothing. Despite the guy's behavior, Timmy tried to de-escalate the situation by saying stop calmly and assertively. He didn't yell at him like the other girl did, and he even revived the disgruntled teammate as a sign of good faith after the abusive commentary. Easy, by the way. Women, if you haven't already figured it out, this is one way. Just say stop, and then all men will stop. Now, this is obviously a dumb point, but I don't need to tell you guys- Wait, but that's not really that dumb like low-key like if you're in a lobby and everyone and someone's like clear comms like everybody chill like it usually works to de-escalate yeah like and i'm just saying this i don't know if you've ever played like counter-strike that's like one of my favorite games also one of the most like toxic like reputations for games ever like a lot of that's hard wild. r's a lot of fucking crazy you know yelling in foreign languages and stuff generally i mean What's you're all in the same in the lobby and stuff like that yeah just not not the most classy people but even ge generally if you're just like everybody chill like people will chill like i, I don't I don't know. He's saying, well, just saying chill is, is not going to work. I mean, but like it will though. You know what I mean? I feel like. Dustin just mute them. I don't know. Like they're, yeah, he's or, acting yeah. like these are like Im impossible feats to like, most people aren't good enough to outplay uh, mm -hmm. muting their, their teammates. Like you have to be in some of the top levels to not be able to outskill that. And like his argument, I don't play Rainbow Six uh siege or whatever the game was and so it's like I, I looked at all the different types of games that are that are online games like mobas you don't really need communication with your teammates until you're a really really high level and most people mute their teammates anyway because it, it's annoying so uh league of legends you don't need to communicate you can mute everybody uh um what are those called arena shooters like like counter-strike or or call of duty you can just mute people and a lot of those games are solo anyway uh, apex legends you can 100 percent mute people i uh solo queued all the way up to platinum which was uh effectively uh spontaneous's rank in in Rainbow Six Siege without 
talking to anybody. You just, you know, use the point commands or whatever, or use chat and it's fine. I, mean, I think you have to use chat anyway. But like the, the, the idea that you can't mute people and still play these games effectively is ridiculous. That only matters when you're really good at the game. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, so you basically just like made this video responding to him uh, after he dropped this video called How People Are Being Radicalized, where you used his own study against him. And uh, what would you say is like another key point of your response to him? Well, the key point was uh, they actually studied other metrics on this paper that they did not study, as far as I remember, on the, the 2014 study. And it ended up, it, no, not as bad as Noah Sampson, but it ended up proving another point that I made in the video, which is that they, they aren't getting harassed more. They just complain about it more. Right. And I think that's later in my video where it's like they actually complain about like 20% more or something like that. And that's why people are listening because, you know, sore thumb sticks out. Right. What did Hassan have to say about you at all? I never watched his first video. I saw the Ludwig one, but what did Hassan say? Well, that would I mean, be, I mean, he did it on stream. So I, oh, and actually you probably can because the people who, who re-upload his, his VODs. Um, yeah. Let me see, see if I can remember. He only watched like half the video. So he, he called my, he called research bullshit. That was like, I was like, hey, women actually don't play these games. And it's it's stupid to try to get women to play first person shooters at, at, at the same rate that men do. Because they just don't fucking care. And you can look at study after study that says this. The gaming industry knows this shit, which is why they don't bother marketing. Well, traditionally, they don't bother marketing shooters to, to women. And they market things more like puzzle games or Candy Crush, Farmville, Stardew Valley. Do, wait, do you see this on, thumbnail? Uh, the, I know it's, this is not his channel, yeah, but... Toy facing. No, dude, he puts... He, he goes, Noah Samson exposes incel YouTubers, and he puts Nick Fuentes over your fucking channel. Yeah, someone did. Or no, Nick Fuentes was in that video or something like that, because Noah Samson was trying to say I was Nick Fuentes. I fucking hate Nick Fuentes, by the way. Yeah. Of really? And and by the body, yeah. And he's also pro can Like I'm not talking about like he looks at lowly con and shit. Like he's an actual, he's an actual child predator. He's made plenty of arguments where it's like I don't see why age of consent matters. Like marriage is consent. You should be able to have sex with a girl as long as she's married. Which means if she if she's 14 and you're 25, like nobody, what does it matter? You're married. Mm. That's consent. So he's, he makes a lot of creepy arguments like that. And he makes another, like an argument for like why rape isn't wrong. And so yeah, he's a really kind of a terrible person. Also, he's pro cancel culture, like all the leftists. So like he's not any better. <laughs> so yeah. the, I just the, think the fact they're relating yeah, so the fact they're relating me this guy says that they don't watch any of my videos like again yeah. do not like nick Fuentes. well i think the point was is obviously because he's like one, you know like dissident right like far right comparing somebody to somebody else is like doing half it's like what you're trying to do is is instead of like arguing you're just trying to like like say these people are similar so you can create like a like yeah, you don't even have to do the arguing yes literally yeah yeah but the, the but the problem is that they're associating me with someone i don't like so yeah. it makes it easy to get a hit on them it's like i don't li like these people right. and the, by the way like i don't think nick Fuentes as an incel. I think he's just gay and, and just is in the closet about it. I, I know people who have met him. He's he's not straight. Yeah, okay. Um, no comment. Hey, I don't want I don't want smoke with the America Firsters. So. Oh. Um, I, I don't like the America. I, I I don't give a shit. So. Well, I, I mean they're they're known for doxing and shit like that. So I guess it's kind of like. I'm just gonna great hold my there. peace. But yeah. Oh, then Nick is not green. Did his thing, dude. That's funny as fuck too. That guy. That's hilarious. So what part? I, I'm just gonna go into your video and see what he had to say about you. You watch Avatar on Twitch. See, that's another lie. No one would be oh, dumb PewDiePie. enough to do that. This right here is not transformative. And then therefore. And if we say your food is good or bad. Something about copyright right. infringement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, streaming Avatar. That's funny. Yeah. I want to see what he said about you, though. Where would that be? I don't really hear what Vosh says. That guy's actually a p Well, not saying, whatever, not saying that you're wrong, but, you know. I, I've i done the research on stream on this guy, Vosh. He's definitely into kids, 100%. I mean, he I, says a lot of... Well, the, the, the problem with the, the Vosh situation is that people did take him out of context of certain clips where it's like, hey, optically, Vosh, this is very, very terrible. He also did it when he was a new streamer, so he probably didn't know optics that well. But also, he said some really sus shit in that last stream. But, like, the, the part where he says... um. It is feasible for an adult to have a sexual relationship with a and child and have, it, have a positive. Yeah. So I actually went and looked up the context of that because that stream is still. It's online. not any like better. He was playing. He was. Yeah. It's not much better. But he was playing like Majora's Mask. And I just looked at how many farts he had and to find out where the moment was. <laughs> this is before I think transcripts existed. Uh, things were a lot harder back then. So um, the the full context is he's talking about a, a type of arguing and it's like this is this type of arguing where it's like it's possible, but in general this is bad. So let's say it's wrong. Uh, but again, why? choose that it's like he chose that as an argument but he also had spent a lot of time during the streams it's like this is again before transcripts existed so i had to watch two separate streams of Fun. him having that many hearts to figure out where the fuck he was so um during that time he spent quite a bit of time talking about lowly con and shit like that and creepy like styles of 
I don't know. It's like it's all over your community. You bring it up it seem, seemingly constantly. Uh, who 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 makes these kinds of arguments and then brings this this topic up constantly? Who doesn't look at this? Shit? Yeah, so, well, very the, very the, suspicious. That's not even the most and damning thing. Confirm. Have you seen the Discord screenshots of him saying that he like put a gecko on his? Yeah, I've seen that. That to me is like so much more damning. And he and then on top of that, he goes bestiality shouldn't be illegal. And on top of that, he has the horse. It's like, bro, you you I don't know. It's yeah, so it's been very it's been been a very funny week for the internet. A lot of people have been gotten have have gotten got like Vosh this week and Keffels too. Dude, I'm definitely making a video on Keffels, 100%. Holy shit, that, that stuff about where they're uh, marketing of like uh, anime, but like also putting it into um, a, a injectable vial that, that is not pure. Like these people, like there's no I've way. Like they're that lucky picture. that the person, they're lucky that person noticed that because that could kill somebody. Like yeah. your your skin is a, def is a defense against all sorts of, of viruses and bacteria and shit like that. And it, once you open up your skin and you start exposing it to stuff and into your bloodstream, you, that's that's how bad shit happens. I mean, staph infection, all kinds of different bacteria that are that are really harmful that you're just injecting into your bloodstream. Like this stuff? Uh, yeah. But it yeah. says like a bunch of like stuff on it too, and it's marketed to children. It's they're using a um probably a term in in Japanese that's that's sort of in poor taste and a little sus because I I know Japanese culture well enough to not think of, like it just means cross dresser. But they um apparently if you the, the website's called uh, Otokonoko Pharma, which that Otokonoko would be would generally mean little boy. That's how you talk to a kid. But if you change the spelling of it, it means like a cross dresser. Uh, the fact that they changed the spelling on the word for child to, to daughter, and like there, there's all these uh, all these things that have the sentiment of being a child if you're a cross dresser in that in that market where it's like I don't know, like people were saying like it's not necessarily talking about children, but it seems to be like it's in poor taste to like call like can you say trap on YouTube? Uh, like to, to like an adult <laughs> or something like that. These this is clearly a, a word for people who look in the eye and just look like children, or for in, in Keffel's case, actual children. Yeah. So they they called it like essentially like, the meaning would be like little boy cross-dresser pharmacy. Well, th this is like too, because on this fucking thing, because this is the thing I think Caffles was, was promoting, it says, directions for use. Use this whatever every five days. Keep away from direct sunlight, heat, and moisture. Keep out of reach of parents. That's fucking yeah, grooming, yo! What the yeah, f it's, Keep it's, out of reach of parents? Excuse me, whatever happened to, like, informed consent? You can't, Minors can't consent, so, but if they're parents, well, it's very yeah, fucking... You say they can't. This is, I don't know, they, they talk all this stuff about predators, especially on the left, especially with, like, predators towards women, but they don't see it's like, hey, uh, I'm gonna market my my uh, drug, my uh, kitchen sink drug with 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 child porn, and then I'm gonna say, no, seriously, dude, don't tell your parents. This is oh, wait, I didn't even notice. Yeah, this this is like a lolly on the thing. Yeah, holy fuck, dude, dude this is so fun. Well, it's definitely it's, making a, it's a guy because there, there's 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 some uh, comic art in a different image. I don't think you have that on screen. Uh, it's on my Twitter uh, of him making some sort of a. I don't know if you can say it on YouTube, so I'll, I'll let you decide. Jeremy showed it uh, from the quarter, and he showed it today, so I probably won't get in that much trouble. Holy. Dude, this is so f yeah, It's straight up. Don't look at my giant girl. There's cat hair in this, and this is the sh Keffel was peddling, right? The progesterone, the fake estrogen thing, right? Yeah, uh, uh, progesterone, it's called. The, I forget the exact name of the drug. Yeah, uh, med medroxyprogesterone, an estradiol. So apparently, I, I would look to the thing, and apparently, you could just make this in your kitchen sink, but it's like, I guess this person also has cats around, and the, she or the, he or whatever, I'm not sure. Someone in Brazil was producing it. They um, don't sanitize the area, and I saw another image of them saying, oh, seriously. Seriously, just just boil it in hot water. That'll kill most bacteria. You're fine. Except for uh, you know, you also get uh, contamination from foreign objects and shit like that. It's not just bacteria that you have to worry about, which is why your environment <clears throat> has to be sterile. Yeah. Um. And so she, this person's like making this. Sh they're like a, a med student or something like that in Brazil, and they're making this sh in their their kitchen sink or something like that, not sanitizing it, letting their cats probably walk on the countertop and sh or you know doing it in clothes that have not been been uh, sanitized. So there's cat hair on their clothes that probably got into the, that's probably how it got there. Dude, this um, is insane. Yeah, this this is extremely predator, predatory for children. It, it's it's crazy that none of these people have been like I don't know if indictment's the proper word, but none of these people have been been charged or arrested. Like this is a huge scandal. Yeah, and this is th so this this thing was on like because I I don't I didn't follow the Keffels thing too. I'm doing research on it right now for a video. But this is the thing that you could buy on the HRT directory, correct? So this was from I I think this is how it works. I, I didn't fully make the connections yesterday. I just didn't have time, and I because I, I was deciding if I was going to do a video on this. I'm like, nah, it's a current event. Everybody's going to cover it, and then nobody. Gonna care no, there's so, so much more uh, here, bro. On Keffels, I might make like a Turkey yeah. Tom style video on this whole thing, bro. Her, her fucking backstory and everything. There's so much there, so much. The whole kiwi yeah. farm. So, yeah, as as far as I'm aware, the relation is is that uh, 
uh, Peffles' significant other, Bob Posting, was working specifically with this website. And I'm not sure, somebody made an advertisement. I think Keffels made one of the advertisements. Uh, who knows if it's that that little thing that's on screen, the, the, the right. child that's on screen. It will, and it will call it virtual CP. Um, Keffels did some marketing for the company or did some marketing for the DIY HRT uh, thing, which this was listed on. And, and that's how they're all connected. But it, you don't have to connect the dots that much because Keffels and, and Bob Posting both admit they've, they've groomed minors yeah. multiple times. And the tweets are still up. It's not even screenshot. You can just you can just Google these tweets or do yeah. from at Keffels or whatever and, and search the term. Yeah, it, and the person, she didn't even delete it. To alter if you might read this, I have assisted at least dozen minors to get on hormone replacement therapy. Cope and see. Well, there you go. And then uh, it's just grooming. Bob Posting has a similar tweet to that. And it's not like, oh, someone screenshot and edited this. This, this tweet's still up. Yeah, I just found that. Yeah. And then Bob Posting said, it's okay. I've unironically helped like half a dozen minors acquire bathtub estrogen LMAO. I can't believe like, and they, they, they're they proud of it. Yeah, they're they're, they're predators. I mean, it's not like a, a city like, like Nambla was. I thought Nambla was a fucking South Park joke until someone brought it up recently. And I was like, uh, oh yeah. my God, that's real. North American Boy Love Association. Yeah, and and uh, throughout the years, people have been, uh, people who have very publicly been trying to lower the age of consent, like a, a big uh, postmodernist, you know who, uh, I think his, his name is Michel Foucault. I forget his first name. I think it's Michel. It's a French guy. I don't. So he's kind of the, the godfather of a lot of the, the current ideas that are on the woke left or the, the radical leftist sphere. That guy back in his day was a major advocate for for lowering the age of consent in France and saying that uh, children should be able to consent with to relationships with adults. Interesting. And that that's that's one of their their big theorists. I'll have to look into that. I'm not familiar with him. Anyway, that was super off off topic. But uh, this Hassan thing, yeah. basically, you know, that shit's into, I'm definitely now, that, now that you're demonetized. Here's one thing that we always in this community cup on. We can stand from the sidelines and watch cringe together, but never tap the glass. You always tap the fucking glass. You need to stop it because that's the quickest oh, way. I can sort of hear it now. That's the quickest way to stop this sh dead in its track. I'm going to forget that last part where he says it's okay. What to is he? What is he even saying? Don't tap the glass. Yeah, like um, he's talking about. I promise, I made this video so long ago that I don't remember what what specific time stamps where he's talking about that specific particular video. Um, but in that case, he's saying like actually kind of a good thing where it's like, hey, I, I'm going over this channel. Don't don't tap the glass. Don't don't harass him after uh, I make this video. Which I mean, you can say that as a creator, but like no matter how much you say people are still going to do it anyway. Well, I don't fault him for that, so, actually. I don't know if you do. Yeah, yeah, I th yeah. I brought that up as a good thing. It's oh, like, okay. hey, this is like, but it's like, then he destroys it by kind of telling people to do that. Or he he change, ruins it in, in the, like, the next sentence or something like that. Open that, that good faith argument. Okay, guys, don't believe this person, okay? I think this is this is productive and constructive commentary. I don't think this person is criticizing me out of a malicious reason. I think he's saying that when I make fun of like pasty little shit skin incels. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, a little backhanded thing. How does that even make sense? What is it? Pasty and shit skin? Aren't those two things contradictory that's what well, it's it's kind of racist too right but would which skin be like dermatitis or like uh, eczema or something like that oh yeah i don't know i was thinking well, he's, the, he those... says pasty pasty is like the color white and then shit skin is like brown so he's like what, are you like mixed what is he calling you mixed race oh yeah maybe i don't even i don't know e either way it was it was a comment on my race or my skin color which is which to yeah. their and them is racist right i am going so to be less immediate likely hypocrisy there to turn i'm i'm going to be less likely at uh turning them around but and I, having i don't think arguments the like that uh, sorry I'm, I do I'm think you're right. Video. I don't think arguments like that really matter to people who are on the left, or they wouldn't matter on the opposite side either, because they don't really care if their their uh, least favorite person is insulted. There, there are other arguments that are more convincing than hypocrisy arguments. Yeah. And then the last one was Vosh, right? So what what do you remember what he said about you or not? I mean, I don't really care about. It. I mean, he's kind of a lol cow at this point. Um. But do you LOL, remember? dumb incel, or something okay. like that. What makes people or... go against their physical preferences? A person's. I think he said the least offensive things, so per that's why he was last. Oh. This is true. He said the least interesting. People things. are way more judgy about physical oh that's right he made a bunch of don't... presuppositions about my channel that were all wrong really like what he's like i bet no, I, he's like i bet no women watch this channel it's like actually 20 percent of my audience is female interesting Here's the thing. He's, like, he's like i bet you this person's never said anything good about a woman's actually i have a massive video uh, on lacey green saying she was kind of a saint for being uh around like the the anita sarkeesian like uh sjw crowd in 2016 and then trying to shake hands and talk to sargon who was kind of a dick to her at the time uh and and build bridges instead of burning them and then uh the the leftist set her on fire for doing that. Yeah, Lacey Green was totally, I, none of my chat's gonna know about this because they probably weren't around for them, but Lacey Green was like this radical feminist who was like BuzzFeed adjacent, was being made fun of a load in like 2016 because um, she was saying a bunch of crazy shit. So it was like her, Anita Sarkeesian, and then there was this other girl who was like, I don't, you'll know what the quote is. It's like, all white Brianna people Wu. are racist, all men are misogynistic, all cisgender people are transphobic. Do you, 
you remember that person? What was that person's name? I don't remember that. Um, I don't think I've heard that quote before. Maybe I just missed it. I know the everything is racist, everything is sexist, and we have to point it all out. That's that's a popular Andy Sarkeesian quote. People said that was out of context, but I've, I've spent a lot of time looking for the context of that quote, and you can't find this, it. This it's this girl. This girl. Milo Stewart. Yes. All white people are racist. I can't think of a more all men are misogynistic. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, Milo. Yeah, the, yes, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, she wasn't like huge, but like I remember at the time, like she was like the lol cow for like Leafy and stuff. Didn't go very far. Uh -huh. Only 30,000 subs. Yeah, no, I never really took off. So after I guess, like 10 years. Yeah, so I guess that's that. That's the end of the the Va or the or Vosh Hassan Ludwig saga. So then I was curious to you about like the, the Noah thing. And then we'll just wrap it up after the Noah thing. I know you have, you have to be somewhere. So so it started off by Noah calling you out, right? Right. He um I made a video about that, that Novara Media, which is like, they, they do this thing where like, we're we're the independent media organization just like you. Just like your, your favorite YouTubers who also has millions of dollars to pay an entire staff and have an expensive office building and we totally don't have any rich people funding us that would have a certain political agenda and so i made a video on them because they made a video about uh hey tribe life what's culture up? on Today tiktok gonna... and youtube and stuff like that where they basically they didn't really make any arguments all they did was say that uh if you like tribe wife culture you're a racist and a sexist and you like andrew tate i was like first of all andrew tate is not a tra traditional person he's yeah, like, yeah, that's like he has more in common with, with a leftist with a with a sexually promiscuous leftist than he does with with a with like a trad con so adam 22 is also a massive degenerate and also a weird pet guy. Uh, they were like, they thought it was a good idea to to film his wife breastfeeding and then upload it to it an adult website. So that guy's a child. Well, there was also another were, thing with uh, some sixteen oh, really? year old, I think. Um, oh really? That's like on Reddit if you look into it. But you know, it's possible that I might be going on the No Jumper podcast. So I gotta. I feel bad because like I want to bring it up, but I also don't want to get kicked out. Like it'd be huge for me. And I think he's addressed stuff before, so it's not even worth it. I don't know. We'll um, see. It, it really depends on you. I think th there are certain lines for me that I wouldn't do, but like. I, I don't necessarily think everybody has to hold the same standards. Yeah. But I mean, obviously there's like, if you want to, and, and I don't even think you have to, to, to grill them on this, you're just there to be a guest, right? Um, but like, anyway, uh, beside the point, like uh, the point is that the people who are, are in these spaces who are traditional, can hate Andrew Tate and they, they don't like Adam 22 because their 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 beliefs are different on the, the polar opposite. Right. That's uh, like saying that fresh and fit are trad. Fresh and yeah, fit are not trad. They yeah. recommend all the same sh They recommend all the same sexual promiscuity that feminists do. Like, yeah. like Myron's not even a Muslim. <laughs> it's like a terrible Muslim recommend that you have 50, 50 sexual partners before you get married. She was basically doing that saying you're a racist, you're a, a white supremacist, and, and basically taking a tribe wife and putting her next to a, a picture of Hitler and saying that these two are the same thing. Right. And so Noah completely ignores all that, which is my main argument in the video, and then focuses on like a couple of different things where it's like he thinks he can get me without actually addressing my, my major arguments. Um, which, by the way, uh, you're always going to get accused of being taking people out of context, but there's a, there's a difference between taking someone out of, out of context and then actually uh, taking time to focus on their major arguments and he clearly avoided all of them like when i did the lovely video i looked at every not every uh, but i looked at probably hundreds of comments in his in his video to look at what people were, were attached to the most of what he said because right. i can't sit there and respond to every single point in a 25 minute video that'd of be course. ridiculous and so i looked for like the the five biggest topics that people wanted me to address i addressed every single one of those things people still, still said i was taking them out of context <laughs> so um and it, noah actually did that and uh did not respond to the major, major arguments of like hey w why are you doing all these ad homs and not actually talking about the arguments that traditional wives are making about this. You're just trying to, to straw man them. And then he goes and does the same thing. Okay, that, that oh, started one, with right? Ashtar Car. Uh, yeah, I responded to it in a community post as I was Hello, like, everyone. oh my God, this video is so fucking bad, but I don't have time to make a video on this because it's going to it's gonna be ridiculous. The points he made are so fucking outlandish that I have to spend time figuring out. And then I have to prove that he's incorrect, which is much easier to, to lie about something than prove someone lied. So I was like, I don't have time for this. I'm working on a different video. I don't want to do it. And so I just responded to him in a community post. Mm -hmm. He then, which was a mistake on my part, I should have just said nothing. Uh, but I was particularly offended how, how how uh, poorly I was portrayed. Like, not like, oh, this is a bad argument that Sean made in his video. It was like, no, this is completely mischaracterizing and a lot of people were watching this. So it just caught my interest. Um, right. So I responded to a community post. He then proceeded to make another video that got a bunch of views off that community post. So again, my mistake on that in terms of like the, so the it was, game. So it was the anti-woke propagandist responded, right? This thing? Yeah. Right. And so uh, after on? that, like uh, the, the the battle was over. He made another video on it. Then I made the thing on it. And I just like, oh my God, these arguments are so bad, but I'm going to ignore it because I got another video to work on. And then two months later, Later, he, I, well, a month later or something like that, I made a video on that Dove ad with yeah. the like the, the women in gaming Dove ad, and that went viral. Uh, so doing he exactly. responded to so, it, and I was like, "Oh, you fucked up, bro. Uh, you you made so many strong mistakes. Like you made a lot of mistakes in the Astar Car video, but you made so many strong mistakes in this this Dove video that it's now interesting to me, and I'm now going to make a video on it. And I just finished a video before I saw his video, so it's like I'm I'm at the perfect opportunity. Right. Okay. So he's made four videos on you because it looks like in this thumbnail you're pointing to the anti wokeness and nonsense ideology. 
video, which is uh, yeah, he's made four. This one, yeah. So he's done he made four. two on Ash Car and then and then two on the Dove thing because I responded to him and he he had to respond to that for his audience because he looked really bad. Dude, um, he's getting I mean, kind of f***ing ratioed on like all of these besides this one because it was a community. Oh, post. he got uh, the Ludwig ratio was was bad, but Ludwig's got a massive audience. His ratio on the second video that he released on me was horrible. It was horrendous. He tried to defend himself and no one. Yeah. Like like after the first couple comments, every comment was negative. Like I've never seen someone get ratioed that bad what after the, these after I made the response to him and then he responded to that response. Right. So, uh, <clears> but <throat> I, I will say in, in Noah's defense, at least in his case, he does at at sometimes get self improvement advice. At least he's trying to make things better. I think he's wrong in a lot of his arguments, but at least he's trying to make things better. People like Ethan or Nick, they're a lot more reprehensible than Noah is. Honestly, after watching more of his content, he might. I, I wouldn't say. I mean, I didn't think Noah Sampson attacked you as a person as much as like Ludwig and Hassan did. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, see what but, Ethan does when he uh, if he responds to the video. Ethan is online. Be, yeah, 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 that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be very offensive. I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah, Hopefully, he'll be good. I hope. I hope he does because I'll make another video on it too. This guy, I eat off his name, bro. My fans love when I dunk on that guy. Thank you, Noah, for making those videos. I, I think I, I grifted like three million views off of Noah. So thanks. Holy f buddy. He's and and like and he kept swinging first because like you responded, he responded to your response, and then you made a video on the dove thing, and he's like, okay, let me revisit this. Why? You yeah. just got BTFO. You just gave him all the ammo you, that uh, he gave you the ammo that you needed. I'm, Especially I'm, if he's gonna do lazy research, and not fully not fully research his points. Like, oh my god, this is easy. It's easy content. Yeah, dude. This I want to see. Like, what I watched part of this, but like, what what even is his arguments here? Because this is a fucking bad ratio. Statistic at all. Where did you get that number? Did you I simply wish the dislike ask button three? Still exists, so you can actually see the metrics. Because the dis the dislike button replacer thing is is very often incorrect. Right. <clears throat> yeah. If you're British friends, because there is no by, way by that significant most margins. It's not like off by a couple votes. It's often like a lot of times it's off by like three times the amount of dislikes. Oh really? Women wow. are eternally at least at least it was when I made the Love Week, Love Week video. I showed that it's like, hey, these are my videos. Here's the actual like to dislike ratio, and they're really really wrong. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wait. So how many? If you don't mind, how many likes uh, or how many dislikes did the the Ludwig response get? I think it was still over ninety percent. Know who the person is? I only have like one video that's under under ninety. Oh nice. That's. I really have to look cool. back for that. Yeah. Oh, went too far back. Yeah. I wish this shit was just public. Yeah. It has uh, ninety four percent likes. Oh shit. It is yeah. uh, seventy eight thousand uh, likes to uh, four thousand dislikes. Oh okay. So this is basically accurate. This one was, was 90, 90, 95 point three percent. Oh wow. So maybe pretty, maybe it took close. a while because th this video was made like over a year and a half ago. I think it's gotten better. I could be wrong. It, it's so dumb of him to like just come at you randomly after you responded to him like with another fucking video. And of all the ones too, like that Dove ad was so bad. Like why is he gonna defend that? Shit? Because they don't know. <laughs> like they, they don't know how how like he clearly doesn't know how to read research and doesn't know that this number that they made up two out of three female gamers is is corporate research and corporate research is the most fucking biased research on the planet. And the the fact that he was like, hey look, I found this study even though they didn't cite any of their data and he found the wrong fucking study was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't. This doesn't look like the study at all. The numbers are all wrong. Uh, the, the the questions are incorrect. Like, right. there's no way this is the study. No well, did, did he pull he pulled up a study in this video? Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, he pulled up uh, an opinion and gaming video or something like that. First, uh, unfortunately, their their graphics were wrong because I was like, does opinion even work with Dub? Because they they tell you who they work with because they're trying to get more business. They're saying, well, we work with Unilever, we work with Nike, and all these big companies so that other companies will will do their research for them or ask them to do research. And uh, initially, when I looked at the the data, I was like, hey, this company doesn't even work with with Unilever, the company that owns Dove. And unfortunately, that was incorrect, and I had to read through that part of the video. <laughs> okay, geez. that's another thing is that when they, they get things wrong, they often won't re-record their lines or they won't make the mistake or they won't correct mistakes. Right. So is this is this the yeah Opinium? So the Opinium, this is the research team that Dove hired. Yeah. No, they actually didn't hire them. Uh, Opinium works with Dove sometimes, but not for this specific thing. This was just some random thing that did. I'm not sure if it was for a specific corporation, but Opinium is a very very or is very much an activist organization. Gotcha. So they like kind of find like stuff that like woke companies can use like kind yeah. of like, bias stuff okay and research when you do it correctly typically is you have a question and you can see if it's true or false with corporate research or with bad research you have an answer and you look for the question yeah basically okay one it was a survey of about can, 14 you, i don't think you'd have time to read this on the on the on your stream but like if you go through the the study there's all sorts of woke language there's all sorts of marxist language and like but like if you scroll down a study and you go to the categories that noah looks at it's like actually men are wrong when they say that when women aren't represented in video games and it's like well that's a biased interpretation that's not really what your data shows how do you know they're wrong it just says that they didn't agree i mean not to i mean and this is totally like anecdotal but the game i have the most hours on ever is overwatch and i believe overwatch has
has more female characters in, in it than male characters. I watched a video by, I think this is sort of like a, a left-leaning channel. It's, it's, called, it's called Moon Channel. And sometimes this guy goes over video games. And one of the interesting topics that I saw recently was like a topic about girl gaming and what makes women play games. The reason people, uh, women play games like Overwatch is not because they're shooters. It's because there's other things about Overwatch that appeal to women. And one of those things in a lot of games is is uh, character customization. Because women like playing dress up. And so they use that as dress up. Uh, another big game that women like, uh, apparently, I, I don't know the actual data on this, but it makes sense, uh, is Red Dead Redemption. And that's totally a game you wouldn't expect. But the reason they like it is because Red Dead Redemption is the best horse simulator in any game that you, you can play. So you can like collect horses and like Okay, but do you think that's true horse, though? I'm going to push back on that. I feel like that's a little silly. I mean, there are, there are plenty of things where, where women are, are attached to certain games. I mean, is it a coincidence that women start playing shooters more the instant that you can start reskinning your characters and, and, and using doing fashion and stuff like that? If, if I'm just going to push back on you, I feel like that's not because you can, you can use different skins on Overwatch. I think it's probably because there's like roles that you can play. Like there's like the support thing, which is less shooting and more, you, it's less, it's like you don't have to like use, have like traditionally mechanically good aim. Like you can just kind of like, it's more mental and, and strategy than shooters. I wonder if that, that uh, girl who was playing, who got, uh, cause I haven't played Overwatch, so I don't know that much about the game, but that's why I use other games as, sure. as an example. Um, that I think she was playing, like there was like a thing where you like take down a shield or something like that. Is that a, a support role? Uh, yeah, that's uh, Brigitte when you have a shield. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she was, I don't know. She was, she was attacking. There was like some sort of capture the flag thing or like, let's, let's destroy the enemy's bases and invade it or something like that. And she was doing that sort of role and she was complaining that she was the only one doing it. But when I was watching her play, you didn't have to actually have to have accurate aim to do what she was doing. Yeah. Stand on point. Yeah. You don't need that. Yeah. So it's, maybe, it's king maybe of the hill. Yeah. Yeah. More. yeah. That's that. Well, cause that's just, cause when you say like you can get customized skins, I don't believe that's why more women play Overwatch. I think it's because unlike CSGO or COD, it's not just like shooting guns. There's like strategy and then there's multiple characters you can play and it's kind of like you can find whichever one you like and there's different roles and stuff you know uh, maybe for some yeah, games there's, that's there's true other but... roles that are more appealing to women as opposed to just arena shooting yeah that and is what I, I, I wonder if, if, if less women play call of duty versus something like uh, apex legends where there's the you know, apex legends there's more again more customization or more yeah. things that would you don't have to be like the best shooter in the game to to win yeah I would, though I would it helps that so what's so this so this is the opinion survey that he cites right yes I, i'm just to be gonna very clear this is, the, this is the wrong study the one not the one that dove used but he claims that dove used it and that dove used it. Oh, I need to see this. Hold on. I'm going to play this. So first up, Think Before You Sleep makes the argument that Dove is a lazy company because they show a statistic on the screen that he doesn't believe is true. Real beauty takes effort and everything about this project from Dove says, we put no effort into this. For example, You were not there. You don't exist. The things are not made for you. Okay. I don't believe that statistic at all. Where did you get that number? Did you simply ask three of your British friends? Because there is no way that most British women are eternally offended snowflakes who care about that kind of stuff. So this is the Opinium Women in Gaming survey from early 2021. It was a survey of about 1,400 United Kingdom gamers age 18 and over. And one of the key findings here was that 69% of women felt that there needs to be more female characters in video games in general. The two thirds statistic that Dove shows here, that is from this survey and here you so he's just wrong yeah he's straight up wrong <laughs> Oh my! <coughs> yeah. You might say, well, Noah, Dove didn't cite where they found that statistic on the screen, so a viewer of the ad would have no idea where to search to confirm its validity. And well, yeah, first, think before you sleep is not just a viewer of the ad, he is a YouTube journalist, <coughs> let's call him, with a big audience that's making a video that critiques this ad. All he had to do was a single <coughs> Google search with some relevant terms to find this survey. It took me 10 seconds. It's really not that much work, but he didn't do it, which, you know, that's... So his method of research was literally just doing a Google search with relevant terms. I mean, sometimes you can do that. Like I found things, if people are, are specific about some of the wording in the studies, you can find studies easy that way. But the fact that he didn't actually try to make sure that there was a connection between Opinium and uh, and Unilever or Dove before he said it was their study was very, very stupid. It's all, it, especially considering again, that the numbers weren't the same. Yeah, because he's at two thirds. Yeah, this one's saying 70%. And why wouldn't they use the more favorable thing if this is what they were referencing? Yeah like the the uh 70 percent yeah. yeah that doesn't make any sense why would they say two-thirds which is 66 percent not seven not 69 percent why wouldn't they well, just there, use a larger more, number there's more nuance to that because if you're trying to say the dub is actually being a little dishonest here because the actual numbers they didn't show the study but they they had an article referencing the study and it was actually 60 percent not 66 percent which is more like three-fifths not two-thirds so but right. if you say three-fifths it sounds like it's slightly more than half but if you say two-thirds well that sounds like pretty much everybody that's most but yeah they were they were massaging the numbers quite a bit what right. they actually 
actually found in their very, very biased study. Right. I, by the way, I spent hours looking for this study because they, they had some sort of research company that they, because I was like, there's no way. So they had some sort of research company that they work with. I was like, here's who did it. It was, it, it's in one of the articles that, and so I looked at every single research paper they had done, wasn't there. I emailed the person who's in charge of that company, who's in charge of the research, didn't get back to me. <laughs> and then I finally, at the end of it, found that article. I was like, oh, okay. The, so they definitely never published this. Well, you weren't listening. All you have to do is just a simple Google search with relevant terms. Yeah. That's yeah, all you this need. This is why from being a person who actually does a lot of the research work, the reason I know that they don't do any research is I know it's it's a ridiculous amount of work to make sure that this stuff is is super precise. And so anytime I watch these videos where they're, where they're talking in, in generalistic terms or they're, they're not really citing sources or they don't know uh, certain things about the study that would be very obvious, like the, the number of people that were in it, things like that, or red flags or when the study was done, means yeah. they kind of didn't, didn't look at the study. Um, I just know it's like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be easy money. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to see what else he has to say and, and like what, what he, firm, what he uh, takes away from this. It's validity. And well, firstly, Think Before You Sleep is not just a viewer of the ad, he is a YouTube journalist, let's call him, with a big audience that's making a video that critiques this ad. All he had to do was a single Google search with some relevant terms to find this survey. It took me 10 seconds. It's really not that much work, but he didn't do it, which, you know, that's lazy. This is completely lazy. Sorry, I just wanted to use that clip. It's a it's a great sound effect. I think it's fun. Lazy, 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 lazy. Later in this video, Think Before You Sleep makes an argument about another statistic from the Opinium survey, arguing that the statistic must be bullshit because some people online didn't like it. Where exactly did you get that stat? It's so fuck I didn't replay that. This time it says 74%. So on this occasion, wait, what? Oh, sorry, I'm watching the stream because you're, you're on a delay. But he's so lucky I didn't replay that part where he, he uh, clipped me saying "lazy" a bunch of times and just played it. Yeah. <laughs> they would have had to survey at least 50 people. That's more than three. But what do they do? Survey the office? How exactly do they ask the questions in the survey? Because there's no way that much of the general population agrees with this woke narrative, considering that in places like America, half the population are conservatives who don't care about this, and tons of liberals are anti-feminist too. So there's no way you got a vast majority on this one. The proof being that you had to censor the comments on the video. So his proof that the general population is- That's actually pretty smart too. I, I feel like this is smart because if this two thirds was representative, like wouldn't this get so much more like support? Well, actually, actually that's oh, not yeah, true. That, well, I, mean, well I, I, would, I would, I just want to correct myself. I feel like that's not true because this would reach outside the audience of the demographic that was surveyed. So that's a bad point. I don't know. If women actually felt like that, they'd be buying all the woke games. And, like the, the get woke, go broke thing wouldn't be real if this actually reflected people's opinions. Right. You would see, well, yeah, yeah, you would see a woman in an action movie and then it would uh, it would do phenomenally. Like Birds of Prey would do well, and then then it would be over. Right. Like this, we wouldn't be making this content. Right. Well, I, I, the argument that that two thirds that this like ratio should be two thirds is also not true because the surveyed population were not also the viewers of this. The viewers of what? This oh, ad. the ad. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, I'm sure where that's going. But you can think of it this way: like when I, more on the game thing, where it's like you have a, a male market that you're trying to inject women into, so you have to find things that women are interested in that aren't in the market initially. So one of the places they do that quite a bit to get superhero movies to be very, very popular is to introduce a relationship into the, into the story. Right. That the relationships in superhero stories are more for women than they are for men because it, it adds in romance mm -hmm. where women highly prioritize that, men highly prioritize self-improvement. You can see that it, it's very polarized in anime. Every show in anime is like super, super, I'm going to get stronger and be the, the best of all the superheroes or the best volleyball player. Actually, that, that anime is for women. <laughs> Haikyuu. I'm going to be like the best baseball player or some uh, So that's marketed to men. Whereas if you look at feminine animes, it's always like, a girl who's not very impressive. It looks very, very hours like brown hair, brown eyes, and then gets in some sort of relationship with like a, a guy who's taller than her and Chad like and, and the head of his community. Yeah. So if you sort of insert that into into the the male narrative or, or male stories, now you get women women watching. If you insert male things into into chick flicks and stuff like that, now you get more men watching. Or it's not it's not as bad to watch that as it would be without that stuff because they're yeah. they're gonna get drug along by their girlfriends or stuff like that. Right. So that was this video, and then what 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 did he say in the anti wokeness and nonsense ideology? I guess he's like looking um, at some Twitter. Account. Accounts, but what do you say about you? So he's in that video. That was the response to my response. And so he's going over that and basically doing damage control on his fuck up. Right. So his two major fuck ups where he got the wrong study uh, that was huge because he was so arrogant about that. Again, this is why you, you act a little bit more reserved, especially if you're not doing as much work because you you really need to be stringent with things if you, if you're going to call someone out as much as Noah did and be uh, risk being wrong because every time you do that you always risk being wrong. You're, you're talking to hundreds of thousands of people and sometimes you can't predict what they're going to find what they're going to see that you didn't see. So. Right. 
uh, the easiest way to defend against that is to be a little bit more reserved in your opinion. And you probably should do that anyway, because it's less radicalizing to be more reserved. The, the second part of this is that he did a bunch of fat acceptance research. He's like, this study says the thing that this thing that agrees with me. That study says the thing that agrees with me. And he ended up, it, I actually read every study that he cited, except for one, because because he didn't read it. And the person he was quoting didn't read it. Um, it was Jeff Nippert or something like that. It was a study about depression. It's like, you didn't read it. I'm not going to, I've already spent 20 hours reading studies. I'm not going to sit here and read this one that, that's not going to, uh, that, he, that it's uh, lightly correlated with this point. Not really, not really helpful. So he, uh, I read those studies and actually argue against what he was saying. He was saying that's okay to be fat or like people who are, uh, people who are comfortable with being overweight don't, don't desire, or people who are, my argument in that video is what, if you're, if you're comfortable with losing, if, if you're comfortable with being overweight, you're not going to lose weight. And he said that was wrong. The studies actually disproved him by saying that people, people who are comfortable with how they are don't change and people who are uncomfortable are the ones who change. So that was a big thing. And so he talked about that in his video where he's like, he, he did more than I thought he would do, which is like, okay, think before you sleep made this argument. I'm going to raise a white flag and say that I was wrong here. Uh, he won in that point. I was like, yeah, that's good. Like that's, you know, you're apologizing. You're, you're kind of admitting fault here, but that's not really what you did. And if you're going to do an actual apology, you need to admit to your audience that the reason that you got this wrong was because you didn't read the studies. You right. just read the abstract. And right. uh, since your audience is younger, if you don't know what an abstract is, an abstract is basically a summary of what's in the study. So that if you're trying to do, like if I'm trying to do research on uh, rats and their ability to find cheese in a maze, I'm going to look at studies on rats and then read the abstracts to find out which studies are relevant to what I'm actually researching. That's all an abstract is. What people will make the mistake on is that they will take what's in the abstract, read none of the study, and assume that the numbers are correct because it was in the, the abstract. Um, if you don't read research and you don't have knowledge in a specific, uh, particular field, you're not going to catch that most research that you read is bad or either wrong in some way. So you can't just read the abstract. You have to, to read, uh, I mean, you don't even have to read the abstract. You can just read the study. Uh, you need to read the methodology, the results, and, and their interpretations of those results. So if you don't do that, you don't know how they got those numbers. So yeah. he uh, said that we got these numbers, a number that was, by the way, entirely unrelated to his point, entirely unrelated to his point. Um, and he would have known that if he read basically one sentence outside of the summary of the study. Right. So um, he basically, because he's coming into his audience like, I, uh, think before you sleep or Sean is lazy. I'm the one who does all the work. I'm the cool guy. I, I work hard and, and put a lot of effort in, into these videos. And then you find out he didn't actually put any effort into it at all. I want to see like, the, I want, I, want, I want to see him responding to, to you saying that his study was wrong. Though. I want to see what he says here. I'm going to push play this. In video games. For context, last video, Think Before You Sleep argued against this statistic by pretty much saying that he doesn't believe it. Where did you get that number? Did you simply ask three of your British friends? Because there is no way that most British women are eternally offended snowflakes who care about that kind of stuff. In this video, his first argument against this statistic is that the research behind it wasn't cited in the ad, and therefore we must assume that it is incorrect or a lie. Okay, so I'm supposed to do Dove's homework for them? Dove is the one who brought up the data. They're responsible for telling the audience where their stats came from. It's not my job to Google it for them. If someone gives statistical data and doesn't say where they got it from, then the proper thing to do is to take it with a grain of salt or assume that they are lying. Now, this is interesting because while I do agree, statistics generally should be cited. That makes the process of fact checking easier. A lack of citation doesn't inherently he doesn't mean actually the agree statistics that statistics are should false. be generally cited. That in and of itself, he doesn't he doesn't believe that. No, he he, he not really. He's just saying that because he got caught. Like he, he's like, well, why? Well, you should just do the research for him. It's basically like like the the general like woke uh, communist argument where it's like, um, I do I know all these things about systemic oppression or whatever. Uh, do the re like you should read a yeah, book. Educate do the research. Yourself, like yeah, yeah educate like educate myself on what? Where's your studies? Like, well, you need to read this. And I've actually gotten to the point where I've read the fucking books that they're talking. about. like, actually, I've read a uh, white fragility. What what part of it are you talking about? You're gonna talk about the part where um, Robin D'Angelo basically just gives the opinions of all her friends and shows no data whatsoever except for population demographics? Are you going to use that argument? Are you going to talk about how she uh, said that white people are incredibly racist against black people because a friend at a party, a, a friend of hers at a party felt uncomfortable that she was the only black person there? That's not evidence. It's just right. an anecdote. Yeah. This is a, a, a well-renowned researcher. She gets paid, I believe, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do speeches. This has been a great grift for Robin D'Angelo because she goes to all the banks and tells everybody they're racist and makes a ton of money. Um, I, I, I almost got into one of her speeches, but they didn't end up doing it. So, uh, unfortunately, because I, I they're gonna like you. shit talk you. What you say? Wait, you were gonna be in one of her speeches? Oh, I was gonna be the wokest person in there. But I, because I had a friend who worked at a company that she was gonna go speak at, and I was like, get me into this. I will, I will fly over there tomorrow. Uh, and he's like, actually, they didn't end up, end up doing it. Uh, but I was okay. gonna, I was gonna go with it. I mean, I, I've seen it. I met Anita Sarkeesian in person too, uh, yeah. and and just ran with the agenda. It was hilarious. She just did not know who you but, were. But well, no, I was wasn't anybody then. I just went and sat in the front row of one of her VidCon panels, and it was just, oh my god, it was one of the most boring things ever. Wait, when did you the only thing VidCon? I failed to did do was. Did you go to VidCon last year? No, this is VidCon. This is a long time ago. It's like 2015. Wow. Oh. So would maybe, you ever go to VidCon again? I'm, I'm going this year. Me uh, and Tom are going. I know well, you're friends with Turkey Tom. Mm, 
Mm. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. But the, the, I went to VidCon at that point because I live relatively close to it. Okay, gotcha. Like, I could just drive there. Like if if I can drive within a couple hours, then yeah, I'll go to it. But like I have to get a plane ticket, so maybe we'll see. Because uh, that that requires a lot more. Like I have to take time off work to do it. Maybe it depends on, who, on who's going. Gotcha. But generally, I think um, people like like isn't it like a lot, a lot of stuff happening this at these things anymore. Like nobody nobody I, I watch goes there. I guess the Tom, if Tom's going, then someone I watch. And if you go, that's someone I watch. But um, outside of that, I just didn't see much benefit for it last year, so I didn't go. What, yeah. Didn't well, occur the, last year? the actual like you know the panels and stuff are kind of. I mean, I you know Mr. Beast is there and Dream is there, and it's mostly at this point you don't really go like as a creator to like learn and like go to the panels and stuff. I mean, they have a few good ones, I'd say, but the actual convention. No, you got to hang out, right? Yeah, you just it's like usually you just like Airbnb and it's like whatever's local in, in like in Anaheim and Cali, and you'll mostly it's like it's mostly like like the it's the most of the creators are there. It's like you can get invited to parties and you get to network and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah it's mostly, that's the only reason I go to any convention, which is why it's like if I don't see anybody I I, I want to talk to, like I I just don't go. Yeah, because <laughs> like most of the like I I went to VidCon, you know, I think I've been twice, and I went to a number of panels, and all of them were sh like they were either some SJW thing or they were like how to be a creator, but like all the creator advice is terrible. Yeah, most like, most uh, <laughs> like it was like yeah, it was like do your best, find your find your niche. It's like yeah, thanks, thanks for the very general advice that I could find from a self help book. Like how come none of you are talking about titles, thumbnails, like watch time retention, uh, how to outline a video, like n none of the actual advice. Yeah, uh, and the actual good panels and stuff are restricted to those who buy like the six hundred dollar pass, which I'm gonna pass on. <laughs> no thanks. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna give that one a maybe. I, I gotta see. I gotta see if the upper level. I think they're just as bad because when I when I was there, they would basically uh, get YouTubers who would say yes, and they were often YouTubers who had one viral hit, but all their other videos were. Sh yeah. They had no idea what they were doing, and and so that what they would do is to fill time. They would spend like 20 minutes, 20 minutes or so, introducing themselves and like saying, "This is my channel, and I do video game reacts, and I uh, started YouTube doing this, and just basically filler content. I'm not here for that. I want to know how to be a YouTuber." Um, and then they'll spend like 20 minutes answering questions about their YouTube career, and then five minutes getting in and out of the thing. So it's like you only have like 10 minutes of actual advice, and their actual advice was just basically nothing. Yeah, and and for the most part, they market the convention to like fans of of like the popular creators. You know, it's mostly toward like yeah. like preteens who are like Mr. Beast and stuff, which is fine. But they also try to play it like that it's also good for creators and stuff. And it's like really the convention itself is not super cool for. I mean, I will say like educationally no, but there's some cool stuff there. Like uh, they had like a drive-through thing. They had like a huge vending machine. Like there's some fun stuff to do there. It, 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 but it's it, but that's all it really is. It's like fun. It's not really educational. Yeah. But, I mean, there, there was stuff on the on the exhibit hall that was good, but basically, yeah. I mean, the panels are were basically like every panel that you go to. Like if you're actually in the industry and you know anything about the stuff, like the the information they're giving is not the entertaining. And the only reason I would go to any of these things if I is if I was a fan of the actual creator. Yeah. 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 Same. Personally, like there was like a Ludwig one last year. I was gonna go to it, but I, I wasn't. I did, I felt I slept in. But yeah, that that's like the only stuff I would really go to. But anyway, yeah, that's off topic. But you should come, bro. You should you should definitely come, dude. There's some cool people. I met some cool fucking people, and you'd be able to. I mean, like you're fucking famous. Like you'd be able to get into like you know, parties and exclusive stuff. So I, if yeah, I were you, I'd I definitely never show my face, but nobody knows who I am. But I do that kind of on purpose because that that makes it less of a dox threat. Right. No, you definitely should, dude. I met so many cool people there. Yeah, dude. You'll c come chill with us. We'll party, bro. We come come to the turkey coop. Is, is, is that uh the, what he calls a uh, him Wendy going to maybe Justin Wang? Well, that's the uh, well no we we called it the coop like the Airbnb that he, that we got last year. Well, I was okay, I didn't live there, but I spent a few nights there. Um, yeah, I, I didn't meet Wendigoon though. I know they've been hanging out a bunch. I met Wang. Wang was cool. Yeah, I met him once. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of my, uh, it's a friend of a friend, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. I just I want to get back onto this. I don't know. Do you have to go anytime soon? I know you've been here for a while. If you have, yeah, to, let's cool. give it five just... minutes. Do you have any, any any last questions? Um, no. Honestly, I was probably just like, if you did, I'm probably just gonna watch some of this and just give my thoughts. So it's cool. I don't want to keep you here. You've been you've been great, bro. I don't want to take too much of your time up. No, thanks. Yeah, bro. Just uh, shout yourself out, and I'll, I'll give a, put a link to your channel in the chat. If anyone wants to, who doesn't happen to know you, go check you out. Oh, yeah, you can watch me at Think Before You Sleep or follow me at, uh, at TVYS Tweet. Uh, I do recommend watching this series. It's hilarious. Start with a no. I, I have it linked in the description of, the, of every video, all in order, so you can watch it if you uh, aren't aware. It's it's a hilarious series. Absolutely, yeah. And um, yeah, as, as you guys know, Noah Sampson, some of you guys, he did make that hit piece on me. So if you want to see him get dunked on, maybe, you know, some revenge porn or whatever, that's going to be uh, <laughs> the Think Before You Sleep series. He, he kind of owns them with facts and logic, so. It's pretty great. Your voice wasn't nearly nasally enough to, do, to say that. Uh, facts. Facts on... Fuck, facts I can't and, even... yeah, Facts and logic. I gotta Fa do a more nasally voice. Facts and, and logic. Voice. Logic and facts. Yeah, something like that. All right, bro. Well, it was good, good to finally to talk to you. Yes, you too. You're welcome on the stream anytime, so have a good one, bro. You too. Bye. That guy was fucking cool.